This video illustrates Southwest Microwave's unique micropoint calibration process, which involves performing a calibration walk and using the Universal Installation Service Tool 2 software to measure cable detection sensitivity in 1.1 meter increments. This process will allow you to generate a calibration profile that accounts for variations in fence fabric or tension to maximize detection and eliminate nuisance alarms along the protected fence line. Every length of micropoint cable in your system will require calibration. Before you begin calibration, follow the instructions in your Universal Installation Service Tool 2 manual to install the UIST software, configure the communications port, complete sensor discovery, and assign sensor parameters. To begin the micropoint calibration process, click on the Sensor Settings tab. Ensure that the sensor cable you are calibrating is enabled. Click on the Cable A tab. Since each micropoint cable is set up independently, both cable A and cable B will need to be configured if both cables are used. This example illustrates configuration of cable A. Repeat all processes for cable B as necessary. Under the Configuration Parameters tab, ensure that the threshold factor is set to the default level of negative 12 dB. Select the Target Location tab. This screen is used for calibration and for viewing activity on the sensor cable. The red line is a default flat line threshold that provides the system with a nominal calibration level if calibration has not been performed. To start the micropoint calibration process, select the Start Calibration button. A dialog box will open that reads, to start a new calibration, you must first clear the existing calibration. Do you want to clear the existing calibration now? Select Yes. The UIST2 software is now ready to record detection sensitivity in 1.1 meter increments. Walk along the fence line, rattling the fence with a large screwdriver or piece of metal conduit above or below cable A. Starting at the Processor Module 2, walk toward the Termination Unit 2 or Link Unit 2. Then return, continuing to rattle the fence until you reach the processor again. The blue bars represent the calibration profile being generated as the software captures disturbances to the fence fabric. The red line represents the alarm threshold with the default negative 12 dB threshold factor settings applied. Select Save Calibration. Once saved, your complete calibration profile, represented by a blue line, will appear on the screen above the red alarm threshold line. Note that the calibration starts to drop off at cell 192, which is the point where the length of cable attached to the fence ends. Repeat this calibration process for cable B as necessary. Open the Configuration Parameters tab and adjust the threshold factor to negative 20 dB by selecting Edit and adjusting the slide bar. Select Accept. This lowers the alarm threshold to ensure that all events are registered during testing. Select the Target Location tab to open this screen for viewing. Clear the blue Max Peak Hold signal by selecting Clear Max Hold. Select Clear Latched Alarms 
to clear any received alarms which would display as red dots along the bottom of the graph. Select the Alarm History menu. This will open two options, Erase Alarm History and Retrieve from the device. Select Erase Alarm History. A dialog box will open, stating, Are you sure you want to erase the alarm history? Select Yes to erase all event and alarm activity stored in the processor that may have occurred during setup and factory testing. Using the Cut Simulator tool, set to the second notch, simulate a fence cut attack by striking the center of every fence panel once for all cable associated with this processor module. For each strike, one or more blue max peak hold lines will appear, representing simulated cuts to the fence. Red dots, which signify declared alarms, may appear at the bottom of the graph during testing. Ignore these at this time. Select the Alarm History menu again. This will open two options, Erase Alarm History and Retrieve from Device. Select Retrieve from Device. A new screen will open with a dialog box stating, Retrieving Alarm History. When the download is complete, the box will disappear. Select the Event Scatter A tab to open the Event Scatter screen. This screen will list all reported cable events displayed as blue dots. The bottom of the graph, the X coordinate, displays the MicroPoint cable cell number, while the left side, or Y coordinate, shows amplitude in dB. Moving the mouse pointer over an event point will display the location and amplitude of the event on the cable as an XY coordinate in the lower right corner of the screen. Hover over each of the blue dots to estimate the average amplitude, or midpoint, of all events. In our example, we can estimate an average amplitude, or midpoint, of 68 dB. Now, subtract 3 dB from the midpoint value, which would give you 65 dB. Write this number down, as you will need this in the next step when you adjust the alarm threshold to optimize detection and minimize nuisance alarms for your MicroPoint 2 system. Select Return to IST. You should arrive at the last screen you had open, the target location screen. Look at the red line, your alarm threshold, and estimate its average value or midpoint. In this example, the average value would be 53 dB. Now determine the difference between the alarm threshold average value and the number you wrote down in the previous step. Taking our alarm threshold average value of 53 dB and subtracting the 65 dB from the previous step, we get a difference of 12 dB. Now open the Configuration Parameters tab. Adjust the threshold factor by selecting Edit and moving the slide bar to change the alarm threshold value by a factor that matches the calculated difference, which in this case was 12 dB. Raising the number from negative 20 dB to negative 8 dB will raise the alarm threshold, the red line, on the target location screen and event scatter graph. Note that raising the threshold factor which causes the red line to rise lowers the detection sensitivity of the cable. Select Accept when the setting has been adjusted. Repeat this process for cable B if necessary. Let's verify our updated settings for accuracy. Select the Alarm History menu. Retrieve from device, and then event scatter graphs. Note that the threshold factor has shifted up or down based upon the changes we made on the previous screen. Verify that this line is now approximately 3 dB below the average amplitude of the events for the associated cable. It looks like we have over-adjusted and the alarm threshold is too high because it's greater than the average amplitude of the events. This tells us that our detection sensitivity is too low. To correct this, let's make an additional round of adjustments to the threshold factor. Return to IST. Open the Configuration Parameters tab. Instead of a negative 8 dB threshold factor, let's back this value down to negative 10 dB, which should adjust the alarm threshold in the opposite direction 
to move the red line below the average amplitude of the events. This will increase detection sensitivity. Select Accept when the setting has been adjusted. Select the Alarm History menu, Retrieve from Device, and then the Event Scatter Graphs to verify these adjustments for accuracy. The threshold factor, the red line, should have adjusted down based upon the changes made on the previous screen. Verify that this line is approximately 3 dB below the average amplitude of the events for the associated cable. If so, the process is complete. Select Return to IST and repeat this process for cable B if necessary.